We Muslims have been told about this man who is called Dajjal, a Dajjal, by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than any other religion in the entire world. Because he is the last messenger and there is no other messenger or prophet after him. And he spoke about him in so much detail because the time for him to arise and walk on earth and do what he's going to do is very close. Let's begin by saying what the Dajjal, that word means. The word Dajjal. What is Dajjal? In English, D-A-J-J-A-L. I think that's how it is on it's going to be on Netflix or whatever. Dajjal is an Arabic word meaning, you know how you have someone who lies? You've got a liar, a liar, someone who says something that's not true, right? And it's something worse than just lying. It's when you mix truth with false and you say it and show it in a way that anyone who hears about it or looks at it, they believe it and it's so hard to disprove it, to say it's not true. Because it's mixed with truth and false. There is a word for it today in the 21st century. And it's called deception. Dajjal means, the closest word I know of in English is deception. You know when you watch stuff on Hollywood, any movie, that's what they do a lot of the times. If you have ever listened to music, and we all, we all hear music when we go to the shops or we, wherever we go, music is playing. You know, not, Let's not lie to ourselves, music is everywhere, isn't it? Isn't it? You go to school, there's music, what can you do? But in the music, there's also words and lyrics, all right, and things that the artists, the musicians do on stage and say that also is called deception. So what do they do? They show you things and sing things that sound nice, which makes it easier for you to believe because you get moved, right? You start moving to the beats. Isn't that correct? And everybody else listens to it. And then you think, man, I'm going to be left out. I better listen to this stuff. I better watch it. Yeah. And you think it's cool. And what happens in there is that they take the opportunity to make you believe things that you're not supposed to believe. Now, I know we're in the masjid. I don't like giving these examples, but I see a lot of young people. And what I think is that we shouldn't hide talking about things that young people now see and hear. I'm a teacher and I talk to my students all the time. And I see some of the, like my parents and their generation, there's things they just won't talk about. But what I see is that we have to talk about them because the young people are already there. You guys are already seeing stuff that we think, oh, my kids don't see it, they don't hear it, I better not talk about it, it's called taboo. No, 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 no. I think we have to talk about it. We have to address it. And I'm not one of those per people who's going to hide from it. I always talk and I'm blunt with it because I believe that this is what we need. And I've seen a lot of brothers who's got, who've got children. They don't talk to their children about things that you're supposed to talk about that's happening in this world, right? And the next minute when their children go, they go lost, the parents come to me and say, please help my children. And I say, well, we should have talked about this, you know, before. And we've got to talk about these things. So that's why I'm bringing up music and I'm bringing up these Hollywood movies and all that stuff. So you know, in the music industry, I won't say names of musicians, but for example, there was this musician and the likes of her and him a lot. She stood up on stage and then what she did was she kissed another music musician, another woman. She's a woman and kissed another woman on her lips on stage. All right. And that was only a few years back. And everybody goes, what? This is disgusting. This shouldn't be done. But what she said was, she goes, we musicians, we have a role to play. I'm sick and tired, this is what she said, I want you to listen carefully. I'm sick and tired of people following rules and order. Following rules and order. 
correct? And I want people to go out of these rules and orders and do what they want to do. So I'm going to promote this relationship of woman with woman, right? And as time went on, it became normal. Isn't that correct? Normal. There's lots of things now that if you went 15 years back, they were so abnormal. Am I right? Now, they're normal. In Norway, there's an article that I read that there are people protesting. They're going to the government to say if they can marry their pets. Wallahi. And there are other people in Texas, in America and other places, they are saying to legalize something called pedophilia. And there are others who are saying we want to legalize incest. Brothers and sisters marrying each other. Billah. Brothers, do you know what I'm trying to tell you here? I'm trying to talk to you about the Dajjal. But before I talk about the Dajjal, did you know that things are going to happen before the Dajjal comes? You see, deception. Deception, which is to mix truth with lies and make people believe it and make it so hard to disbelieve it. That doesn't happen overnight. Listen to this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ first. Let me just share with you this hadith. 1,400 years ago, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The Dajjal, from the time of Adam, Adam salam, till the end of time, from the time of Adam, till the end of time, this entire world, he said, there is no bigger trial, fitna, than the trial of Dajjal. Dajjal is the biggest trial that's going to come to the people. Now, before the Dajjal can come, a road, a path is being prepared for him to come. So that he can be accepted immediately. The Dajjal is the one-eyed, the liar, the deceiver. For him to deceive the people, so good and to be the biggest trial the people would have already been gotten used to deception already we have to live in a time of what we can call in arabic dajjal a time of deception so that the real deceiver can come it's all set up for him do you understand i see muslims themselves now today moving away from the real deen and making up their own beliefs we see them all the time some of them, they say, you know, I think prayer is what you think prayer should be. There are now some Muslims, they call themselves Muslim. They say, we only believe in what the Quran says, but we don't believe anything the Prophet, peace be upon him, said. They're called the Quraniyun, the Quranites. You know what they do? They bring you the verse about Salat. And they say, well, the Quran doesn't say exactly how to pray. So we get to make up the way we want to pray. Do you understand? There are Muslims now in Australia, there's also in America, I don't know about the UK, but there are Muslim so-called Imams who say that being homosexual is, is allowed in Islam, it's halal, it's, it's legal, and uh, they do gay marriages and everything, you know, in the name of Islam. All right, but you want to be gay, go ahead and be that. But don't come and, and twist the Quran. The Quran says it's haram, it's forbidden. So does Christianity and Judaism, you know, it's known. But what I'm saying is, there is a time when even some people who dress like Imams will make you believe in a different religion than Islam and I will call it Islam. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's deception. And the shaitan helps the Dajjal. Do you know, do you know that the shaitan, Iblis, Iblis, the head of the shayateen, right from the beginning when Adam salam was created, he said something. He goes. You know the people who follow yani the children of Adam? You know the children of Adam? Those who are Muslim, those who follow your book, O oh Allah, I am going to go to their religion. 
I'm going to sit waiting for them at their religion and I'm going to make them believe a different religion. I will make them practice their religion the wrong way. He'll deceive you, he'll deceive me. Why? In preparation for the Dajjal. All the deception has to happen because when the Dajjal comes out, he doesn't call himself an Imam. You know what he calls himself? He calls himself Prophet Isa salam himself. The Dajjal calls himself, I am Prophet Isa. But he's lying. Listen to what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, one night, one night, he was going on Isra' wal Ma'raj. You know Isra' wal Ma'raj, the story? Okay. So he said, Jibreel salam took me to the Kaaba. And I was praying at the Kaaba. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim for whoever wants to see it. He says, he took me in front of the Kaaba. And then after I finished, I looked to, I looked to, to my right or left. And I see a young man. His hair is nice and long. It comes up to his shoulders. It's neither too straight nor too wavy. And it looks like water is on it, but it doesn't really have water. So it's got really beautiful, silky, shiny hair. And his face, his features is dark, Adami, which means he's got a dark features. And he had two people with him that he was putting his hands on their shoulders. And I liked the way he looked. So I asked Jibril, who is that? And Jibril said, that is your brother, Isa alayhi salam. Isa ibn Maryam, the real Isa. He goes, then I looked to the other side and I saw another young man. And this young man, he was one of the biggest sizes that I've ever seen. He wasn't tall, but he was just big. And his hair was very coarse, very rough hair. Right? And one of his eyes, the right eye, it was bulging like a grape. He can't see from it. It's, it's, it's gone. So he can't see from it. It's blind from, from the right eye. And the left eye, he also called it in another hadith, he says it's awar as well. Awar means it's deformed, deformed. So both his eyes are deformed. They don't look normal. But one, the right eye can't see from it. The left eye can see from it. That's why he's called the awar al-dajjal. The one with the deformed eyes. So Prophet is describing him to us so well. Anyway, he says, and he had two people and he was, uh, you know, leaning on their shoulder. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh Jibreel, who is that? And he said, That is Al-Masih Al-Dajjal. So, when the Dajjal comes out, the world is ready for him. The Jews will follow the Dajjal. Why? Because, uh, because the, Dajjal, the Jews, they didn't believe that Isa salam really came. Remember, they believe that he's an imposter. He said the true Isa, Allah SWT lifted him. They didn't crucify him, nor they, they killed him. They killed someone else. Now the Jews who became Jews later on, they were the ones in the children of Israel who wanted to kill Isa alayhi salam. And they boasted. They said, we killed him. We killed him. That's in the Quran. And they became the Jews. And what they're saying right now is they're saying the true Messiah is yet to come. We are waiting for him. So they didn't believe in the true Isa alayhi salam. And they didn't believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So who are they waiting for now? They're waiting for Isa to come. Guess who they're going to get? They're going to get the Dajjal. And what will he say, I am? I am Isa. You know that? But he's lying. The true Isa salam, comes afterwards and he will kill the false Messiah. But there's another Shaykh talking about it, inshallah. I'll leave it for him. The Christians will follow the Dajjal. Why? Because they believe that Isa is going to come back. Salam. So do we. But they don't know about the Dajjal as we know about him. Now, the Christians believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And they also call Jesus God. Isn't that correct? They call him God. So it's not going to be hard for the Dajjal to convince them that he is Jesus Christ. Guess what else he's going to say after that? The Prophet ﷺ says he will stay among the people in the world for 40 mornings, 40 days. In the beginning, he'll tell the people, I am Isa, the son of Mary. And the people start following. And they follow him because he also shows miracles. Well, that's what he calls them. He calls them miracles. But Allah gave him certain trials. For example, the Prophet ﷺ told us that he will get to a mountain, a hill, and he will order all of its treasures to come out. And the treasures will be found very easily as if, as if they're serving him. He will order clouds to come and unite and he will make the rain fall 
in lands that are that don't grow. And the people look and they go, oh, wow, oh, wow, he gave us crops, he gave us truly, he is the son of God, maybe. Right? They start believing he's Jesus Christ. And he starts doing all these things, right? The people who don't follow him, they live in, in hardship, in misery. They're going to get hungry, they're going to get thirsty. They, it's very, very hard on them. So the rest start following him. After a few days, what does he say? He says, I am God. I am your Lord. I am God. It's not going to be hard for them to believe that he is God. They just saw all these beautiful miracles, apparently. First, he goes, I am Jesus. And the Christians already say that Jesus is God. He's part of the Trinity. It's not going to be hard. Do you understand what's happening? Now, the whole world is getting prepared for that. 